Hi everyone and welcome back to the Lawn to No Dig Garden series. Apologies for the lack of the mandatory update lap around the house on this one. I promise you it will make a return in the next video. Uh, as you can see I've picked up a couple of IBCs here. If you managed to battle through my garden plan video, you'll know I wanted to set one of these up to catch the rain off the roof of the garage and the other to catch some from the gutter at the east end of the house. I kept an eye on Facebook Marketplace for a few weeks trying to find the best deal on a pair of these. Initially, I didn't want to spend more than $100 on both, but after waiting a few weeks and wanting to get this project started, I ended up paying $80 each for these, or $160 total. Uh, naturally, two days later, I saw three of these listed for $40, on Facebook Marketplace. Absolutely brilliant. So while these cost me $160, you could definitely get these for cheaper if you hunt around a bit, or just have a little bit more patience than I do. Before you buy any though, it pays to check what they previously had in them. Uh, these two contained a seaweed based fertilizer, so I'm happy to use these to water the garden. You may have noticed the timber that was on the back of the ute or on the trailer and is now front and centre here. Uh, I also picked this up but I actually got this all for free. Uh, my parents live on a lifestyle block and they're having to move off that so they've got a bunch of uh, timber in their hay barn that they no longer need so they're happy for me to uh, take it off their hands which is fantastic for me. So the plan is to use that timber to create a frame uh, for the IBCs to sit on. Um, that should give me a little bit of water pressure um, and it'll just make uh, filling anything, watering cans or anything like that from those IBCs much easier if they're off the ground. Alright, this is me questioning my existence as I realise I haven't accounted for the width of the timber in my measurements, uh, which resulted in cutting two links 70 mil short. I went and measured the IBCs a bunch of times just to confirm I was an idiot. Um, taking heed from my previous mistakes, I then proceeded to cut the next two links short as well. Um, I only took enough timber... I needed for the project, so I don't have enough to resaw them, so I'm just going to roll with it. It's not going to affect the structural integrity of the frame, it's just going to look a bit funny on the corners and be a pain in the ass to weed it around. We've recently moved back in here, so I haven't had a chance to set up my garage yet, uh, which is why I'm doing this outside on those saw horses. Um, which were pretty painful to work on to be honest. The frames themselves are bigger than the sawhorses so I was using a board to sort of try to um, balance the frame up there which just made things way harder than it needed to be. I have a few ideas of how I want to set up my shed so I'll probably make a video on that at some point but it won't be part of this series. At this point of building the frame, I was wondering to myself why I hadn't added the top and bottom boards on one side up on the saw horses. At least then I'd have two square sides to start with. I spent heaps of time here trying to get everything square. Um, so I did the second frame the other way and it was much easier. I lost a bunch of footage in this episode so I'm not 100% sure if you'll see that later or not. Alright our frames are together now and we're around the east side of a house. Look at those incredible compost bins in the background. If you haven't already, go and check out my video on those. We have a self contained unit on the other side of the fence and I was shitting bricks that I was going to hit either a pipe or wires while digging these holes. Then I remembered I'd seen a video on Facebook the week before where they dug a hole using a water blaster so not to cut any of the cables. So I thought I'd give it a try, 
Here's how it went. Brilliant. Needless to say, I went back to the spade pretty quick and just dug very cautiously. It was all good news though, and I can confirm no pipes or cables were harmed in the making of this video. I used the 300mm peg here to roughly measure the holes were at the right depth before coming back the next day to concrete the frame in place. Alright, so I spent a bit of time here digging out the grass underneath the edging to get it below the surface. I had planned to use a bag of concrete per hole, but only ended up using three quarters of a bag, so a total of six bags across the eight holes, which cost roughly $70. After that, I added some concrete into the base of the hole, so the post will be sitting on concrete and not soil. Um, and to also help with getting things level. I found the best thing was to just tap the high corners down progressively with a sledgehammer. Alright, so per the instructions on the bag, apparently this concrete doesn't need stirring. So that's what I'm going with. I'm just tipping the concrete in the hole and then adding water on top of that. I went and had some lunch and when I came back the concrete had hardened off enough to throw some dirt over it so I leveled out the soil inside and outside the frame. I added the bottom board with the intention of it acting as garden edging so I wouldn't need to mow or trim the grass under the frame. Uh, to make sure nothing grows I'm adding a thick layer of cardboard to block the light and help with weed suppression before I add some of the wood chip I made from the three trees I cut down around the front of the house. While I was adding this I just tried to make sure to add a nice thick layer and tried to compact it down as much as possible. Alright, so you can see here the mistake that I made earlier, cutting those boards short. Um, as I said, it doesn't affect the structure at all, it just doesn't look great. This was my first time working with downpipes, so I wasn't sure how it would go, but it was actually really easy. Just adult Legos with a bit of cutting really. I went out of town to get the fittings and downpipe as I could get them at a fraction of the cost that my local hardware store sells them for. I brought 3 meters of 80mm downpipe, 12 bends or junctions and 4 brackets for $83. Unfortunately I underestimated how much pipe I needed and I didn't want to drive out of town just for another 3 meters of pipe. So another 3 meters of down pipe plus two 65 to 80 mil adapters cost me an additional $52 at my local store. Alright guys, so I'm still learning about the editing side of things and I want you guys to enjoy watching the videos. So I'd like to know what you think is best. Please let me know in the comments if you prefer to see the whole sped up process of what I'm doing like I've done up until now in this video or if you'd prefer to see short segmented snippets of the process at normal speed like I'm going to do for the rest of this video.
right so with this last pipe going on that's pretty much job done on the water harvesting system in total it cost me $365 to set up which is more than I initially anticipated but I'm happy with how they turned out so I'm not complaining uh, watching this back I feel like the second half of the video at normal speed required far less explaining from me I'm not sure if that's down to the fact I did so much explaining in the first half that it wasn't required in the second half or that the clips at normal speed are easier to follow let me know what you think in the comments here's a little bonus clip for you guys this is the first rain we've had for some time and it's been going steady at this gentle rate for about 24 hours now you can see I've added a hose attachment for filling the watering can once we have gardens in I may add a longer hose off these Um, I've added a kitchen sieve to filter out any chunky stuff coming out of the gutter. You can see how easy it is to clear out and then replace. Uh, the only thing left to do on this one is add an overflow pipe near the top of the tank which will run into the original soak hole. Much the same on this one here, I've added the garden hose attachment here as well. Um, and also added a sieve on this to filter out any of the chunky stuff. Uh, the only difference being I've added a plug for the downpipe here, so once the tank is full um, I'll put that plug in and then the excess water will then fall to the next downpipe along the gutter. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a like. Also don't forget to leave a comment and let me know your editing preference and I'll see you in the next one.